Okay, then. So, so first thing we, we do uh, when we enter the flight deck, we do check that the hydraulic pumps are off. Is that on the overhead? Yeah. Sorry. It yeah. Okay. So perfect. It and is. you do check that the gear handle is selected down. Yeah. Selected down. Yeah. Yeah, and the flap lever should be on the uh, up. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when you have done that, you, you go ahead and select the battery on. Okay, so we have... Uh, we also have ground power here. Do we use ground power first or battery first? Yeah, no, always the battery. Okay, so we put battery on. Because now you're going to be powering the uh, ground service bus. Okay. Okay, yeah, so when the battery is on, you need to check some things. Uh, you go back for the, um, uh, if you lower the screen, so you will check that you have brake pressure. It's a basically, you know, the three green for the landing gear down, right of it, you see that you have brake pressure. Okay, yeah, see it. Yeah, perfect. And then uh, you go, uh, yeah, perfect. You have brake pressure, 3000 PSI. That's and then uh, everything is totally normal. You go up again to the overhead panel. Uh, perfect. And then you go ahead and select ground power on. And ground power is on. Very nice. And uh, basically, uh, that's it. But if you go to the aft overhead panel, You can actually see the stall warning test. Stall warning. Uh... Top right. Okay, yeah, got it. Yeah, you press it, first one. And you should have a, um, a stall warning test. But sometimes it could take a couple of minutes. If uh, when it, On the actual aircraft, it could take some a couple of minutes before the you can actually hear uh, the stick shaker. Okay. Uh, uh, because of... Uh, um, uh, yeah, the power, it needs to take like two minutes to be powered up. But you do the stall warning test, and do you do also the MAC airspeed warning test? Uh, whereabouts is the MAC? It's above the stall warning test. It's above the stall okay. warning test. Yeah. So you can hear the clicks on that one, that's good. Yeah, you should hear the clack, click, 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 click. So you test both. And uh, when that's done, Years ago, you used to do like a, a rainbow check. You, you start from the captain's uh, P12 circuit breakers, and then you went like a, from left to right, like a rainbow from uh, the captain's P12 behind. Yeah, exactly that one. It's called the uh, P12 panel. Okay. Yeah. And you go like a, a from when you're standing, basically from at the flight deck door. Uh, with your nose towards the flight deck, you do like a, you check the circuit breakers, and then you go up, and then you uh, basically select the uh, IRSs uh, to uh, uh, nav, and then you continue towards the first officer P6, and then you go down and you check the circuit breakers. Okay. That's yeah, that's. That that, yeah, that, that's the old way of doing it, uh, but, but it's, it's a quite nice uh, way of uh, just doing a scan because you start from left and go up and then you end at the right side behind the first officer. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, uh, so at this stage I, I basically just uh, have a seat. Uh, on the uh, left or right seat, depending if I'm doing line training for a uh, first officer or a uh, captain. So let's say I'm uh, I'm a first officer today. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I need to do uh, some certain flows, and uh, basically I start with uh, selecting the IRSs on. Yeah, exactly. So the irises. Uh, let me see if you can zoom in. You put into nav exactly nav. So it should be aligned on the seat. Perfect. And then uh, the 
when you go to the right, you should have a flight recorder uh, button at the top. Do, 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 where are you? At this one. Yeah. Okay. 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 So it's different from ours. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Just leave it. Okay. You can just leave it. So let, let's start with the flow then. So the flow for the first officer is uh, basically it will start at uh, the top left of the overhead panel, uh, flight controls. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you turn on the yaw damper, and then you wait for the light to extinguish. Perfect. You check that the navigation uh, uh, controls are correctly set. They should be on normal, normal, normal and the uh, control panel should be normal and the source should be auto yeah yeah perfect and uh, fuel pumps should be all off yeah. if you are not in the uh, apu but because we're going to start the apu you can select the number one off yeah exactly okay. that one and you can go ahead start the apu okay. so this will just save time and then you go uh, up again for the uh, overhead and then electrics uh, you just check that the cabin utility is on the IFE seat is on and at this stage the drive standby power drive one drive uh, two should be lit yep. yep and then you go down for the below the ground power uh, button you have uh, basically gen off bus and uh, gen off bus number two should be lit yeah. and as soon as you have the APU you should you should have the APU any second and uh, when you have the APU generator lit you, should, you can go ahead and select uh, the APU generators uh, both uh, left and on perfect and so basically now the ground personnel can disconnect the ground power so, we continue uh, for the panel uh, and go up again. And up again, yeah, so basically circuit breaker light, we don't need it because it's uh, uh, daytime. Uh, the panel bright light, I always use a little bit of the panel bright because I'm a nerd. It's quite awesome to have uh, the background light a little bit lit. Yeah, so perfect. Uh, equipped cooling should, should be on normal. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And go ahead and emerge the exit light should be armed and on. Yeah. Perfect. And uh, the shine seatbelt should be on. Both. Perfect. And uh, then we continue up again. So uh, window heat. All of the four window heat uh, should be selected on. And you should confirm that you have a light on light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then you go further down, the probe heat should be off. Uh, wing anti-ice and engine anti-ice should be off. Yeah. And at this stage, you should have low pressure on all of the hydraulic. Yeah. Yeah. And you can actually see already now that all the doors uh, are closed, all the hatches are closed, forward entry, off entry, service doors, and uh, everything is closed. So, uh, yes? Making good progress. <coughs> Really nice. It's almost typewriter now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, if you go back to the uh, overhead panel, so yeah, perfect. So now it's the pressurization, the right panel for the pressurization system. So if you go upwards, you see that you have the uh, trim air. Yeah. Yeah, should be on. Perfect. And uh, for the time being, we have a dual bleed light on the uh, left of the ram door, full open. So that's totally normal at this stage. 
and the, that's because of the APU bleed is on. Okay. Yeah, and uh, the thing is, when we arrive to the aircraft, the APU bleed is uh, basically selected off, and then we select it on. So, uh, uh, yeah, so it, it actually, from the beginning, when the aircraft was uh, unpowered, uh, the APU bleed uh, was supposed to be on the off. But it's totally okay. You can just leave it on, and then you can select the left pack and right pack to auto. Yep. Sorry, could you briefly explain what the packs are? Uh, basically, the packs are uh, the the thing that controls the pressurization for the aircraft. Okay. And so what they... without the packs, you basically are uh, flying on pressurized. Oh. That's not good. Yeah, so you have left pack, right pack, and one pack can actually support a total amount of pressurization that you need, but then you have a penalty on flying above flight level 250. So let's say that the right pack is uh, inoperative, then you have a maximum altitude of flight level 250. Okay. Yeah, so, so yeah. So, so you have them turn on the entire flight, and then when you land, you turn them off again because you don't. It, yes, basically. Basically, the thing is, uh, when we land, uh, when we when we land and park at our destination, the packs will be remained on auto, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it depends. Uh, when we unpower the aircraft, the actually the packs you only touch the packs when you are uh, shutting down the aircraft. Okay, so the on auto and on the entire flight. Yeah, basically. So now it's all going to be on auto. Uh, left pack, right pack, and the isolation valve should be on open exactly at the, as it is. Because on the 800, if you have the left and right pack on auto and the isolation valve open, the aircraft will actually uh, burn less fuel because now we are burning fuel. Right, yeah. Yeah, so because the APU is on and we are taking bleed air from the APU and supporting the aircraft with the packs. If we leave the isolation valve on uh, auto, then actually the aircraft will, um, uh, how, do you, how do you call it, will... Um, save fuel. Yeah, when it's on open, it will save fuel. Okay, so it mm -hmm. burns fuel um, and open. Yeah, it will burn more fuel if it's on auto, and okay. burn less fuel if it's on open. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. yeah, so if you go back to the overhead panel. Okay, so we need to configure the pressurization, uh, which altitude uh, we're going to be flying, and uh, of course, landing altitude for our uh, arriving uh, airport. Okay, so for this purpose, we'll just do a circuit around Birmingham, as we did in our session. Uh, off the top of my head, I think it's 328 is the uh, altitude for Birmingham. Okay, that's perfect. So you can just leave it on 350. Okay. And I'll yeah, but the, the and the cruise altitude you can put it uh, on uh, uh, 3,000 feet or something. Okay. Because if if you leave it on, let's say you leave the pressurization system at an altitude of uh, uh, above, let's say, uh, let's just, just let's say just flight level 100, 10,000 feet, and then you. You fly and you never catch that altitude. You start to descend below you below uh, ten thousand feet. Then you will get a warning called off schedule descent. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So basically now everything is done uh, except that logo light should be on. Okay. Uh, left. You have it on your right. Uh, uh, yeah. Perfect. That should be a logo light on, and the strobe light should be steady. Wing light off, anti-collision light should be off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's the overhead panel. Basically, that's the flow for the uh, first officer for when it comes to the overhead panel. And when it comes to flow, we do the flow extremely strict, starting from the top left, and then moving down, and then you go up again, one step to the right, top. Uh, to the top and then move down, one step to the right and uh, move down and, until you are at the pressurization uh, system. 
And I had a question generally about SOPs. So, um, yeah, is there much difference between airlines in terms of their flows, or do they keep it generally the same? Yeah, the, basically, uh, this flow that we are now talking about is uh, Boeing generic. So, uh, uh, the majority of airlines use the same flow. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, if you use this flow, basically this flow is basically the same type of flow if you're flying the 777, if you're flying the uh, uh, Dreamliner uh, 767, uh, if you're using the Boeing generic, then basically it's the same. So if you do the same flow, and some things are company um, customized for if you're flying like uh, Ryanair or if you're flying like Norwegian, because some companies, they don't have the exact same type of cockpit, uh, but it's the same type of flow. Okay. Oh, because yeah. it's optimized for that airplane, so it wouldn't make any sense to change it really. Yeah, because basically it's optimized for this type of aircraft, the 800 yeah. so. Uh, and I believe that uh, Ryanair and all, basically all type of airlines in Europe are using the same type of Boeing generic. Of course, you have some differences. Yeah, so the overhead panel is now uh, done, and uh, Pav, you're going to be the pilot flying. Okay. So for the, when you are the pilot flying, and the uh, aircraft is not moving yet, of its own power, so the MCP is yours. Okay. Okay, yeah, so go ahead and select your flight director on the right-hand side first. And then the captain's flight director. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then you can verify that the right side is a master. Okay, it says MA here. So yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. So we, the right side is master. And uh, <clears throat> perfect. And to continue, you see that on the heading, the heading knob, Yeah. you have the bank selector. It should be selected on 25. 25. Perfect. Never 30. Okay. I've always used 30 for some reason. Is it, it's, is it the, act, the absolute limit then? You can't go beyond 30? Yeah, the thing is you can bank 30, but uh, let's say you suffer an engine failure. You're not allowed to bank more than 15 okay. uh, when the speed is just uh, uh, on the lower barber pole, if I say like that. Mm -hmm. you, you don't have to, uh, enough of speed margin. So uh, and, and when it comes to SIDs, uh, you have, uh, when you design SIDs, they use 25 degrees bank. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you can use 30 when you're flying, but uh, never a lot. When, when we fly at the, let's say, flight level 370, we never bank 30. Mm -hmm. I mean, why would you? Yeah, but because, uh, yeah, exactly, why would you? Because if you're using LNAV, the LNAV will protect you when they say turn this and that direct to a certain point. The LNAV function will never bank more than it actually needs because you can actually buffer the aircraft if you are heavy and you have a. Uh, it's if it's a, the atmosphere is quite warm than the standard atmosphere, you can actually stall the aircraft. Yeah. So let's say that the controllers will give us okay. Rui, Pav, and Ben turn right to the heading of 180 degrees, and we are at uh, let's say we are at 270 degrees, and uh, we actually first we take the bank selector to maximum 15 degrees, and then we start the turn. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, to continue, uh, okay, master, master, you see the auto brake. Yeah, it should be on RTO. Okay. So, and you need to verify that the auto brake light is, uh, it was lit and then extinguished. Did you see that it was lit? Yeah. And then yeah. It went away. Right. Say if it say if it doesn't uh, um, turn off the light. Would if you the light still. Like yeah. If we, let's say that the the light is uh, on. Le uh, then something is wrong with the auto brake. Okay, but can you take because off with the malfunctioning auto brake or was that? Yes, you can, if it's a dry runway. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, yes, you can, but you you have penalty as hell uh, because uh, you need to remember that if something happens, you you as a captain need to 
uh, above 84, 94 knots, uh, and you need to uh, brake manually. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. If you t if you turn off the auto brake to off. Okay, if you, and then uh, once again, RTO. Okay, you see the light? Yeah. yeah. Then okay, the light tells you that basically the auto brake system is now doing a self test, and when the light extinguishes, self test is now done and the system is ready to use. Okay. okay. So you always need to check the lights, that you have actually the light and then it extinguishes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So basically, you have done everything, uh, and you need to check your mask. And when we check the mask, it should be on hundred percent. So basically, it should never be on normal. It should be on hundred percent. Yeah, you can. You can see. You, do you see the knob in the middle? It says. It says an N. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. it's one hundred percent. It should 100%. be pushed down the one hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you check the mask. You know how to do it. Um, I forgot. Okay. You push the red knob, yeah. and simultaneously you need to press the left lever. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah, one mouse, man. <laughs> You need to. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, disregard. Disregard. I, I don't think it's possible. But we always do this every single turnaround. Okay. And the same time, you need to go to the overhead panel. And you, if you go more up, you have uh, pressure. Yes, above the three lights uh, left right and mm. nose you can see that you have crew oxygen yeah yeah perfect so that's perfect and uh, we use we, we we have a placard when it says two pilots three pilots and how much oxygen we need to have okay okay perfect so now we're actually done to start uh, configure the CDU and the FMC um, do the pilots have more oxygen available to them um, than the passengers, because I've heard you only have 15 minutes of... Uh, the passengers, they have 12 minutes. That's the passengers. That's the passengers only. How much yeah. do you have? It, the thing is, the passengers and the pilots, uh, we have minutes of oxygen. But uh, ours, it depends on temperature, it depends how big the oxygen bottle is, and how much oxygen we are consumed, yeah, and if it's uh, on uh, normal. If it's uh, on uh, normal or uh, overpressure, it, it, it depends on different factors. But uh, we don't have the same amount of uh, oxygen and we don't have the same system as the passengers. Okay, and uh, do you have the same sort of the first officer and the captain? Do they have the same system or the same oxygen supply? Or is yes. it also redundant? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the same oxygen supply. Uh, for the uh, first officer and the, the captain, it's from the same uh, bottle and the same supply. And the plant fuel is 6.9, 62.1, yes, that's perfect. And our cruising altitude should be, you can put in 4,000 feet, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yes, now you will have a prompt to execute, you just go ahead. Yeah. And then you go over to the N1 limit page. And then, yeah, of course, uh, today, 62 tons. Yeah, we always, uh, the 48 is a, a assumed temperature. Okay. And the D rate is uh, the fixed D rate that we uh, lower D rate for takeoff. Yeah. Okay, 22K, 48, perfect. And takeoff, uh, you can use flap five. And we, Ne basically never use flap one uh, because flap one you are more prone to uh, tail strike the aircraft okay. you have less margin with flap one for uh, tail strike than flap five okay so uh, and you can go ahead and put in uh, basically speeds of uh, 132 132 and 147 something 
Perfect. You can see that the aircraft already gives you a trim 5.2. Mm -hmm. so you, you can go ahead and set. Yeah, you can go ahead and set the trim 5.2. Perfect. Yeah, and uh, the aircraft it needs a departure runway on depth arrive, depth arrive. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So you. Will... So departure will be three three. I think it's active right now. Okay. Yeah. And uh, if you want, you can select a uh, SID. It doesn't matter. And then you go ahead and activate. Excellent. So now you have a departure. Uh, you have, uh, yeah, you basically you have uh, everything. If you go to the um, takeoff page, number one, the, f the fastest way to go to the takeoff take page is, do you know how to do it? Um, no, I'm not heard of it. If, if, no. if, you, <laughs> if you press N1 limit. Okay. And then you you, you 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 see that you have takeoff. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Okay, that's the fastest way. <laughs> okay. Okay. So basically, you can see that it's. Uh, let me see. If you go to page number two. Okay. Right in scope. And uh, I can just leave this. And then go back to number one. Takeoff ref number one. Uh, okay, not, not, on the, in this version of the CDU, it doesn't say that performance in it is complete, but uh, we have a prompt w when it says uh, complete on the performance in it, but it, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, and uh, if you go up to uh, the MCP. You can actually select uh, Elna, Vina. Do you see the the indicated airspeed? You need to put in the, your V2 speed, and uh, it's 147. Okay. Yeah, perfect. And the 3,000 feet for the altitude, or 4,000 feet, doesn't matter which uh, altitude we are climbing. And then you need to do the course. Uh, No, why? Why do you need to select the course if you're doing it visually? The, uh, the yeah, the thing is, um, let's say you are, yeah, you're doing it visually, and uh, on the course, if let's say you are flying and you select uh, from approach to VOR mode or approach mode, then you will have uh, if you if you go ahead and select um, on your FIS panel uh, approach mode or VOR mode. Then you will have a different, as you, as like you're flying Cessna. Yeah. You will, you will have the wrong indication if you are, if you don't have the, the course selected for the runway. Oh, okay, I see. So you it's basically mean? just taking your work, workload off. Doing yeah, basically off, take so don't have to do it off. Yeah. And if you, if you decide, okay, let's let's fly like an ILS or something, then you, you need to have the course selected for the appropriate. Uh, yeah. 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 That's what I knew. Like I was just curious whether the um, procedure is different in a traffic pattern or not. No, we, we, we on a traffic pattern. We always, uh, if I'm flying a traffic pattern, I always select to make my life easy. To, so I always select if I'm just going to fly a traffic pattern. I, I select the course with the runway just to make my life easier. Yeah, and just to make sure, like in case you wouldn't need it, then yeah, you have it because because you're never gonna you're gonna you're not gonna touch it. Because it's already selected. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So uh, we need to do some more st stuff. We need to uh, correct Q and H. I see that it's selected on uh, inch of mercury. Uh, I don't know how uh, the weather hectopascals. Uh, it's saying here it's Q and H is zero nine nine seven. You need to select nine nine seven on, uh, and you need to go select. Uh, uh, heck to Pascal instead of the inches of mercury. Okay. Uh, it was it was nine nine six today where I flew, so very low air okay. pressure. So now it's correct. You can actually see that uh, you are. Uh, do you see at your yeah exactly? You see the three forty. Yeah. And slightly left of the three forty, you see like a yellow. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That is correct. 
Yes. Yeah, you can see the N1 set and speed ref should be on auto. N1 set and speed ref should be on auto. Yeah. Yeah, those two. Uh, speed ref should be on auto and N1 set should be auto. Okay, good. So I don't know why it says uh, no V speeds because we have already selected the V speeds. Uh, so yeah. And uh, your heading bug should be on uh, same three two eight. So perfect. So basically, we are now ready. If everything is completed, you you have done your nav setup, maybe. Okay, you are on map mode. Okay, okay, now okay, now I see because you have a, a lower uh, range, so you can go ahead and select range number ten instead. Okay, sorry, map mode. Okay. Uh, yeah, that will give you a better uh, situation awareness actually. Okay. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, yeah. So basically, we are now ready for engine start. Nice. Yeah, basically before pushback, we need to do some certain stuff. We need to do the, uh, the before start checklist. We need to do uh, the pre-flight checklist, of course, and then the before start checklist. So, yeah, basically on the before start checklist, you need to select fuel pumps on. Release parking brake. On. And then from right to left, hydraulics on, from right to left. Very good. The lights uh, are extinguished. Yeah. Yes, perfect. And then uh, left pack, right pack off. Yeah, it's French. Perfect. And anti collision light should be on. Release parking brake. Very good, and then uh, you go uh, to your radio panel. Release parking brake. And for the transponder. Yeah. Uh, basically, we uh, at major airports we turn it uh, to. It depends what type of transponder, of course. Uh, let me see. It's. Uh, uh, do you have uh, parking brake. transponder? Charlie, Papa, November, Delta, Romeo? Trans yeah, you have. So, two clicks. One, two. Down. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we are now ready for engine start. Release parking brake. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start that. And the master caution, you should always uh, press it to cancel the lights. And then you can go ahead and start engine number two. Yeah, you. Perfect. And you should start timing. So we. Perfect. And uh, you can. Uh, yeah, exactly. You need to actually see both. And. Uh, at 25 and 2, select fuel on. The captain will select fuel on for number 2. So you can go ahead and do it now. Perfect. Now you should have a light up within 10 seconds. Okay, light up. Perfect. And at 56 and 2, the start switch should go to auto or off automatically. On this aircraft, I think it's uh, off, yeah. So at 56, it should automatically go off. Perfect. So, and you can see that the low oil pressure and start valve is uh, on engine number two is not lit, it's extinguished. Perfect. So, same procedure, engine number one. Set parking brake. And uh, I see that you you are touching the igniters. You don't need to do it. 
Like I will explain later uh, why we uh, what we do with it. Okay. So same thing. Twenty five and two fuel goes on. Twenty five and two fuel goes on. Perfect. And then you will, you should have a light up with ten seconds. Perfect. There you have it. And then uh, at 56 and 2, the start switch should go to off automatically. And you always check for normal engine indication that everything is, looks normal. And uh, when the start valve open light is extinguished, you just say start your cutout. That's the only thing we say during an engine start. So if if ever. Yeah, so perfect. So basically the engines are now uh, running. So what we now do, uh, the first officer has his uh, flow when the captain tells the ground personnel to uh, disconnect. And remember to select the parking brake on when the pushback is finished. Perfect. So uh, when uh, the captain requested to, okay, you may disconnect and uh, to the start, show me on right or left hand side with the bypass pin. That's the trigger for the first officer to start his uh, before taxi flow. Okay. Yeah. So um, you go ahead and select uh, generators, left and right on. Yeah. Yes, perfect. The pedo heat. Yeah, the probes. Okay. So on, and then you go to the left pack. Yeah. Should it be auto, but uh, yeah, left pack auto, right pack auto, isolation valve should be auto, yeah. and the APU bleed should be off. Yeah. And uh, then you should select the APU off. Yeah. Start switches to continuous. Perfect. And then uh, the captain will uh, ask for uh, the flaps, flaps five. And then you should verify that the flaps is traveling towards flap five. And you should have the leading edge flaps transit light yellow will be lit. And then of course it should extinguish and you uh, should have the green leading edge flaps extended light. Perfect. And uh, at this stage, the captain will do flight controls check. Done. You will do the after, uh, sorry, the before taxi checklist. So let's say it, that it's, it's done. So, and then uh, the first officer will request for taxi. OK, so can you call ATC and create your taxi request? You request taxi. So here's just a straight taxi, we'll go through here and I think it's the Echo one holding point over here. Okay, yeah. And straight on to three, three. So we all set to go? Taxi. Yeah. And you think, uh, which lights do we put on for this? So we need uh, basically, we have all the lights. Uh, you've seen the taxi light, uh, runway turn off lights, yeah. left and right. Perfect. Cool. <laughs> nice. So, what's your typical taxi speed on these sort of routes? Uh, maximum, yeah, but basically just slightly, so it's uh, like you're doing now 14, 15 knots, and then reduce it. Yes, nice. So if we have uh, the clearance to line up, we can just go ahead. Okay. Okay. We 
should share live stream on four one way entry. Is it the landing? Well, uh, you should turn off the, the taxi light should be off. Yep. And uh, the landing uh, retract not retractable but the first inboard and the exactly perfect. So ninety degree line up please. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Very good. Lovely. I see that you have done this before, Pav. <laughs> A lot of lineup practice. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, so we, we have the correct runway, we have the uh, correct indications. Uh three two eight, three two eight, and of course the compass should read three two eight something. And uh, when we receive takeoff clearance, we select the auto throttle to arm. Perfect, and you can actually verify on the uh, screens that you have arm. Yeah. Perfect. The FMA. Uh, and uh, yeah, if we have uh, if you're ready for takeoff, uh, you, you should advance the, the thrust levers until 40%. Okay. Just to see that the engines are stable. Well, minimum 40%, and when you have 40%, I see that you have 30 yes, yeah, so perfect, and then you press TOGA, and we should uh, be passing to 86.4, and uh, trust is set, and at 80 knots, I will call 80 knots, and then you would just verify with the same check, okay? Let me see, okay, it's so lagging to 80 knots. And uh, okay, V one rotate positive rate gear up, and then just you just fly the aircraft by uh, the help of. Flight director, and then you fly the magenta line for the SID. And at 800 feet, you call for N1. Yeah, so uh, N1, you have it now, and then you can select the speed for up speed. So, bug up, called bug up. What will that speed be typically? Uh, above 200 knots. Yeah, to 20. And then when the aircraft accelerates, uh, you are now approaching your 3,000 feet. Don't bust the 3,000 altitude. Don't bust it. Very good. And uh, when you have uh, a trend of increase, the speed increasing, when you have a trend of the speed increasing, flaps equals to one. We should always verify that we have flap one is not set, yeah. and then uh, when the speed is basically at 200 something, you can select flap up. Yeah. Perfect, and then we should verify that the flaps are up, no light. Yeah. So, because we're not flying above transition altitude, we're going to keep 3,000 feet, we do the after takeoff checklist. So, uh, uh, the landing gear lever should be on off position. Perfect. And then you double check the pressurization that it's uh, correct setting. Perfect, it looks very good. And then the auto brake, you can select off. Perfect. And then uh, flaps up the light. And then we then ju we just do the off takeoff checklist. So basically, now the off takeoff checklist is done. Okay. So, 
can actually just apply the SID, but configure the aircraft, uh, configure your CDU for uh, a, a return, uh, ILS return back to the airport. So you can just go ahead and configure the and the. So uh, the DEP arrive, you go to the arrival page, and then you uh, use the ILS 33. Perfect. And then, uh, yeah, you can you just don't need to have any transitions. So, and you go to the init ref, init ref. Perfect. Then verify that it's uh, ILS 33. And then you go ahead and set the uh, course, you go ahead and set the frequency. Okay. Okay. Uh, and the core selectors are set. Yeah. And then the flap setting do that. You're going to use flaps 30 or flaps 40. Okay, perfect. And you can pre select the wind correction. Tap five. Double tap the five. Just double tap the wind core. Double tap it. Perfect. Okay. So the auto brake, which auto brake you want to use? I will use 60. Suggest three. Auto brake three. three. Perfect. So and then, do we have a minimum for the ILS four three three? Let's. I believe it's going to be it's uh, five hundred and fifty maybe. Uh, yeah, you can just put five. Barrow. Uh, uh, barrow. Uh, I think because the airport elevation is 300 and something and uh, we can use 200 feet above the airport uh, elevation. Yeah, 550 feet basically, yeah. So, you know. so uh, yeah, so uh, you can go back to the CDU. You can press, actually, uh, you can navigate with the go press, go ahead and press heading select. And I think, yeah, and you can just navigate yourself for self positioning for the the runway three three. And then you can go when you have uh, a downwind, you can go ahead to um, the CDU again. And go to legs page. And then next page. Uh, the Charlie in that 3 3, course to intercept 3 3, bring it on top, select it, bring it on top. Perfect, and you can actually see the intercept course. Okay, okay, uh, type 327. Three, yeah, exact same of the course for the, uh, for the runway. So you click out here where it says intercept? Yeah, click okay. there. And then execute. Okay. It will give you an extended center line. Okay. Oh, so if you if you see your screens, you will you will have an extended center line. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, when you are a beam, the threshold. Yeah. When you are a beam, the threshold, you can you can reduce the speed to two hundred and ten knots. And I think you, you, you know the airport uh, frequencies better than me, so just verify and double check that everything is correct. Okay, the core selects are correct. Yeah, and uh, basically when you are approaching Fox Trot India 33, you can go ahead and select flap 1 and reduce the speed to 190. I'm gonna use block speed, so basically I'm gonna use just block speeds to just help you, because we don't fly the 800 with block speeds, but you can do it, but just for, uh, because I think it's slightly working, so we're, we're gonna use 190, okay? Okay. And I'm gonna see, so you can go ahead and select flap one, and uh, if you give me, if you zoom in the speed tape, I'm gonna s just see a thing. If because when you select the flap one, you should have a flap one marking on the speed tape, and we don't have it. 
Okay, you can reduce and uh, okay, you can select flap one nine uh, speed one nine zero. Yeah, and uh, perfect. We have tailwind. You can go ahead flap five. Yes. And you can go ahead select speed one seven zero. Stop. Perfect. And the aircraft will slowly, slowly, slowly reduce the speed. So now we have flap five. Uh, so next pause of action uh, later is going to be gear, but not yet. Okay. We're just going to fly on this speed and uh, just uh, straight ahead. Uh, and uh, what's the temperature? 16? 16, yeah. Okay. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. So you basically you can start the inbound turn. Perfect. And you can see the trend vector for uh, your. You can see the trend vector. It's always nice to use the trend vector when you turn, and it will predict when you exactly that one. So we don't want to overshoot the uh, center line. So keep turning, keep turning, keep turning. Because we have a tailwind. Perfect. And you can arm uh, approach, arm approach. Yeah. Perfect. And you can uh, keep turning. So we have like a 45 intercept. So we're gonna turn. Uh, to. Yeah, I can turn a little bit more to 90 something, 290 or something maybe. Or 285 or something. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. So you can actually see that we are below the glide, we are left of center line. Yeah. And you have on the approach, very good, nice. So the low class should be alive soon. Yes, we're good, we're good. You can go ahead, select gear down, flap 15. Should have uh, an intercept every second, and every second soon, an intercept. Yeah, very nice. Dry slow, Borla. Very good, so go ahead and put in the speed 160. We're gonna fly the speed 160 onto distance 4. Go ahead and put in the inbound course for the heading 328 or 327. And the missed approach altitude, you can leave it on 3000. Yes, verify that you have the gear down, verify that you have uh, the flaps 15. Okay, speed brake arm. So basically now we do, uh, we advise the cabin, cabin crew to see for landing. And uh, we do the landing checklist uh, until flaps, basically. So what's our distance to the runway? Six nautical miles. Six nautical miles. Could you put the range to 10 or 5 on your airpiece? Perfect. Can you put a 10? Yeah, very good. So, what's our distance? Five. Very good. So, basically, you should have the runway just straight ahead. <laughs> Typical UK weather, man. Can't see it yet. So, what's our distance? Yeah, four. Okay, you should select the flaps 30 and final speed. Flaps 30, final speed. So we, the the speed that we have, uh, yeah. One four eight. Uh, yeah, one four eight or one four nine. Yeah, perfect. 
So now we are basically checklist is completed, everything is completed, and uh, go ahead and land the aircraft. As soon as I have visual, I'll come back here. Yeah. Yes, so uh, 1,000 feet stabilized. At 500, I will call 500, you should, you should say check. Five hundred. Check. And if you have contact, say contact. Very good. Uh, you're a little bit high. Very good. So you're back on the glide slope. Don't die. Up with the nose. Perfect. Very nice, Pav. Very nice. So, uh, watch your speed, a little bit of more trust. And then uh, just uh, land the baby. So, up and landing, deploy reverses. So up and landing, deploy reverses. Perfect. Deploy reverses. And you should deploy until so you have 72%. That's perfect. And the speed brake should be up. Very good. And then the speed will decrease. And uh, okay, we have already 60. You can uh, cancel reverse, auto brake it disarm, and bring it to normal taxi speed. So uh, reduce the speed to below 30. Perfect. And normal taxi speed. And uh, feel free to taxi the aircraft into the gate. And when you have cleared the active runway, the first stop that starts is uh, off the land procedure. Okay. Okay, perfect. So uh, the so basically at 60 knots, the captain takes over the controls, and the first stop starts with the overhead panel. Okay, perfect. So overhead panel. Um, uh, so uh, basically, on the overhead panel, it's gonna be uh, the strobe should be steady, and uh, uh, pitot heat should be off. Yes, and then the start switches on off, and the captain will uh, reselect the lights, taxi light on, and landing lights off. Perfect, and uh, you go ahead, select flaps up. Perfect, and auto break off, yeah. and cancel the uh, master caution. We always cancel the master caution. Perfect, and let me see. Doo -doo 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 -doo. And transponder, uh, yeah, you can just leave it as it, as it is. And company frequency, we always select company frequency, and uh, yes. Do you need the APU? Is that towards the gate? Yeah, that depends if we have ground power waiting at the gate. If we have ground power waiting at the gate, we don't need APU. Okay. Yeah, so, okay, so as soon as we get to the gate. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You can just have a quick glance on the overhead panel that we have done everything, everything is correct. Very good, very good, very good, very good, very good. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Yes, very good. What's the 
maximum taxes paid you allowed on tax? 30. Okay. 